Hi. Uh, I was asked um, if I could look at the histology of the thymus. And I thought, well, I'm never going to have a thymus slide. Turns out I do. Um, first problem solved. Second problem, the thymus is involved in the development of the immune system. The immune system is incredibly complicated. I sure as heck don't understand it. So how much detail do I go into? Well, if we're going to look at the histology of the thymus, we're going to see what we can see, and we're going to describe what we can see, and talk about what we can see, and talk about the general... We're going to talk about what the thymus does. From an anatomist perspective, not an immunologist perspective. Okay, it's, it's very colourful to look at. You hear the seagulls. Um, it's a very darkly staining section. Uh, and that's because we've got lots of very darkly staining cells packed tightly together. You find the thymus in the chest. If you take the sternum out, you find a mass of tissue deep to the sternum, anterior to the great vessels in the chest, and that's the thymus. The thyroid is up in the neck. Completely different, different locations, different anatomy, completely different functions. The thyroid is in the neck, the thymus is in the chest. Um, and when, so all of our cadavers are elderly people, um, we don't see a thymus. We could not distinguish the thymus from the other connective tissue and fat tissues that are there because it has shrunk. It's involuted. It's been replaced by fat. There we go. Slide you in. Okay. Um, a lot of purple. Uh, more light. We can see a lot of structure there, right? We can see structure. We can see different areas, and they are related to function. Um, if I if I go to the edge there, this is my lowest power. This is a, a four times objective lens, ten times to my eye, so forty times magnification for me. It'll vary a little bit for you depending upon how big your screen is. Um, but this is the the thymus. Looks very looks very immune immune. -y. Looks very immune system. Looks very lymphoid. The thymus is a primary lymphoid organ. So the two primary lymphoid organs are bone marrow and the thymus. And they're kind of involved in producing... Oh, there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of trouble you can get into talking about the immune system. Uh, primary lymphoid organs, so the bone marrow, that's where hematopoiesis occurs. That's where the cells of the immune system, the cells of the blood are made. Some of those cells go to the thymus, and in the thymus, they mature, they differentiate to become T lymphocytes. That's why they're called T lymphocytes or T cells, because they have this step in the thymus, whereas B cells. Let's not get into the history. I'm going to get myself into trouble with immunologists. Anyway, uh, so those cells move into the thymus, differentiate, mature, become T lymphocytes and move on into the blood to secondary lymphoid organs. Secondary lymphoid organs are organs where the cells of the immune system live. They circulate in the blood and the lymphatic system. Secondary lymphoid organs are lymph nodes and the spleen and tonsils and payers patches, you know, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. So the lymphoid tissues of the body then get populated by these T lymphocytes. So the bone marrow and the thymus are involved in the generation of new cells. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but that's what's going on in here. Okay, so if we whiz around this organ, you can see there's a capsule all the way around it. So there's a thin connective tissue capsule holding it all together. That's a cut edge there that then doesn't have a capsule. Cut, cut edge. Uh, we can see blood vessels and bits and bobs in here. Um, that's a good blood vessel there, right? It's a bit bright. Um, because uh, that's how lymphocytes move around. That's how the cells of the immune system move around. They move around in the blood and uh, the lymphatic system. So we have blood bringing what you might call prothymocytes into the thymus. And then you might call those cells thymocytes as they move through the thymus. And T lymphocytes when they 
when they leave the thymus, but you'll find that these cells in here, these thymocytes also commonly get called uh, lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, T cells, we'll use those, those, those names interchangeably. And there are epithelial cells in here kind of guiding them and um, doing the things that I'm going to tell you about that happen inside the thymus. But this is what the, the thymus looks like then. So you've got dark areas, we've got light areas, we can see some very distinctive um, circles in there. We'll drill down to those later. And we can see a dark area around the outside, which you might call a cortex, and a lighter area in the middle, that you might call a medulla, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, shall we? Now let's, um, let's look at this bit out here, because this... This is very helpful. Um, it's also quite difficult to, let me zoom in, to, to summarize what T lymphocytes do. I can give it a go though. Um, T lymphocytes are a key part of the immune system. They will recognize, oh, that was, I thought it was a light, sorry. They, T lymphocytes will recognize and destroy invading uh, organisms, pathogens. They will identify cancer cells and destroy them. They will identify infected cells of the body and destroy them. And they'll also manage the immune system a little bit. T lymphocytes will also produce memory cells, which means that you can respond to that same pathogen faster next time. Your immune system learns, recognizes things. So um, the other word we need is antigen, really, I guess. Um, antigen, an antigen is um, a molecule, a structure, that an immune cell can recognize and attach to. Um, and we'll come back to that in a moment. But, okay, let's get down to the gross anatomy. Is that too bright? Uh, around the outside there, we're seeing the, the capsule surrounding the thymus, and we can see some blood vessels in that capsule, as you'd expect. So this is connected tissue. And what I wanted to point out is that we can see these septa. We can see the connective tissue extending into the thymus, and then dividing the thymus up into lobules. So that's that, that capsule extending in there. So the thymus has lobules, and then if we look at a lobule, we can see that it's much darker around the outside, so that's the cortex, and lighter on the inside. And the reason we're seeing that difference in color is actually because most of the cells here are lymphocytes, are those T lymphocytes that are maturing. And in the cortex, they're very densely packed together, so it looks darker. And in the medulla, they're not quite so densely packed together, so it's lighter. Uh, we can see, mm, now, one of the tricks of looking at the thymus is that when you look in there, there are so many lymphocytes, it's very difficult to see or recognize any of the other cells of the thymus, but there are epithelial cells here which are guiding these uh, T cells. And I wonder if that red there, that's probably mast cells maybe? Uh, we'll see if they're granulated as we go up to a higher power. Actually, we can do that now. Let's jump down. So this is, um, this is the 20 times objective. And I'm giving it a lot of light because there is a lot of stain in there. So the dark staining circles, those are all the, the T lymphocytes. And what they're doing is they're moving, so they first come in to the cortex and they come into that layer that's next to the capsule. And then there will be some cell division in there probably. So they can divide and proliferate, but they will mature. And as they mature, they move from the medulla towards the cortex. Um, let's go up to the, in the soft lens. Mm. I actually see a, see a lot of these cells are packed together in 3D here. Um, I don't know if I've got enough resolution to see if that red is granules. Anyway, um, so the darkly staining cells are lymphocytes and any lightly staining cells in there are other cell types likely to be um, in, the, in the cortex, likely to be um, epithelial cells of the thymus. So the epithelial cells of the thymus will um, drive the differentiation, the maturation of the T cells. There, there are relationships in between the two of them. Now, 
The reason it's difficult to summarise what T cells do is there are different types of T cells, of T lymphocytes. So as these cells differentiate and mature, they're going to become those different types. Um, T cell receptor genes are going to be rearranged and those T cells are then going to put cell surface markers on their surfaces, um, which will indicate what type of cell they are and what function they're going to have. Um, now, one problem you have with the immune system is you want the T cells to recognize antigens of foreign things, foreign organisms, bacteria for example. You don't want your T cells to recognize the antigens on the cells of your own body and target them. So as the cells pass through the thymus, one of the really important processes they go through is they're presented with self-antigens, I think by dendritic cells. Um, and they're presented with self-antigens and those lymphocytes, those T-cells that do respond to those self-antigens are then marked for apoptosis. Apoptosis is the nice tidy cell death where the cell packages itself up and dies. I've read that 95% of the T lymphocytes going through this process recognize self-antigens and they're then removed. And this is really important because um, if your T cells then move on and become parts of your immune system, they recognize antigens in your body, they're going to start breaking down the cells and the tissues in your body. And if, you, if they do that, now you've got an autoimmune disease. The healthy cells and tissues of your body are being broken down by the immune system when they shouldn't be. That's why this process of weeding out the T cells that just so happen to recognize self antigens, you've got to weed those cells out, otherwise they're going to cause problems late, later in life. So <clears throat> the T lymphocytes start at the periphery in the cortex and then they move into, they move across the cortex into the medulla um, and those that recognize self antigens get weeded out. Now, oh, there we go. These are very distinguishing features of the, um, of the thymus. These are Hassel's corpuscles. So these are within the medulla. So um, cells move from the cortex to the medulla and these Hassel's corpuscles, I don't think it's, they're entirely understood, um, but these aid in further development, further differentiation of, um, that's a good one there, look at that, of the T lymphocytes. And it's proposed that they also mop up uh, the remnants of apoptosis. So these are also formed from um, thymus epithelial cells. But that's quite a structure, isn't it? That's, that's quite a thing. Um, so Hassel's corpuscles within the medulla of the thymus. Um, and then, oh look, up there, there we've got a blood vessel. So once the T lymphocytes have proliferated and differentiated and matured and developed and become a T lymphocyte and they've passed all the tests that have been asked of them, they're then allowed to pass into the blood and can pass around the body and go off and populate the secondary lymphoid organs um, and form a healthy functioning immune system. Now, if this was the thymus of someone my age, um, I would see, I wouldn't see all this, most of this would have been replaced by adipocytes. So most of this would have been replaced by fat. So the thymus is most active during childhood and adolescence. And uh, as you become an adult, um, yeah, it just starts to get replaced by, by fat. It's, uh, it's not so useful. So the development of your immune system happens early in life, uh, largely. Um, those are some really important stages. But look, we can see, yes, that looks super bright. We can see um, the connective tissue um, extending into septum. We can see large blood vessels in there. So there's blood coming in, blood going out. Uh, actually, if we go, we've got some lovely vessels. These are just lovely shapes, lovely blood vessels, lovely colors. You can see 
the walls there, the endothelium. Um, and if we look, so if we go back to where we started and we look in that septum in there, we can just about make out some spaces where the blood vessels are passing into the thymus and feeding immature thymocytes into the cortex to go through this uh, this gauntlet of challenges, this uh, rite of passage. Anywho, makes some pretty shapes, doesn't it? That, I think, is the... Um, thymus under the microscope so the thymus is absolutely crucial for the development of a normal functioning immune system and of course uh, a normal functioning immune system is absolutely crucial for surviving in this world of uh, microscopic pathogens that we live with um, and Autoimmune diseases, I think, are a pretty big topic these days. So if you're considering the, uh, the functional anatomy of the thymus, that concept of immature thymocytes, uh, they travel to the thymus in the blood from the bone marrow, they then start in the periphery of the cortex and work their way towards the medulla. The epithelial cells in there are helping them proliferate and differentiate and mature so we get different types of t-cells with different jobs and then those t-cells are challenged to see if they recognize self-antigens of the body and there could be trouble in the future in which case they are triggered to enter apoptosis so they don't cause trouble and once they pass all their tests they move back into the blood off around the body and go and live a long and happy life maybe in the secondary lymphoid organs of the body um, a crucial part of the immune system but uh, I am I am anatomy, an anatomist, so my understanding of the immune system is um, is limited at best. But I hope that was interesting. I hope that was good to look at. I've got to say the thymus is not something I've looked at in a very, very long time. Um, but it's another good example of when we look at tissues, we get a sense of, oh yeah, that's a very, uh, that's a very immune system-y looking tissue. So it's useful to look at it from that aspect as well. Hopefully, I know I do talk a lot about um, how the thymus is involved in maturing T cells and it's all very uh, theoretical. So being able to actually look at the cells and look at the structures that show this happening hope, helps it fix in your mind a little better. You can, you can see that it's actually a real thing that's really happening. Okay, um, right, I'm traveling for a couple of weeks. Um, so I'll see you in a few. I hope that was useful and interesting. I enjoyed it. See you next time.